What is up, everybody? We got the amazing Cody Tuma, Scorch the Fears. I think we're on like episode 70 or something like that. I'm not even sure what episode we're on anymore. Cody is a social media beast. I've been following him and he just blew up like really, really quickly. So it was really cool to see because like, I think you have like, I think you now have like 60K followers or like 70K or something. And I remember- wow, like, we're like, up to 80,000 now. 80,000. And I like literally, I literally, I think I was following you when you had like 10 or 20. So like, and that was really quick. So I definitely want to get a little bit into social media just because that's how I know you was I was just like, man, this guy's like freaking crushing it on social media right now, right? But really quick, just introduce yourself, introduce your business, like what you do, how you're in the real estate investing place, how you're in just all the other spaces you're in. And just like real quick, give a quick intro to the people who don't know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm involved in like all sorts of different stuff, but I'll try to try and keep it brief. So real estate agents in both Oregon and in Arizona, real estate investor. I do like spec home building, fix and flips, buy and holds, triple net commercial real estate. And then recent new venture for me is in the digital marketing and social media space. Love it. Absolutely love it. So what, like, so what were your beginning? Cause you're doing so many different things. Like what, what was your first entrepreneurial journey? Yeah. So like, it, like real estate, like specifically, or just like entrepreneurial journey, anything. Let's start from the beginning. I love hearing the stories of like people <laughs> door knocking on like houses, selling trash bags or whatever it might be like, yeah, let's get into like the first entrepreneurial thing. Yeah. Yeah. So my first entrepreneurial, like real thing was when I was in college, I actually think I was a, yeah, going into my sophomore year and I had literally no clue, like if I wanted to continue like staying in college. And I was like, you know what? Like, I feel like I just kind of need to take a term off right now. Like I just need to like, kind of do like a little reset. So I ended up taking a term off from college, but I made this like agreement with myself and I was like, all right, Cody, if you're going to take this term off from college, you got to do something. You got to start a business or you got to figure something else out to like support yourself. So that's like the agreement I made with myself. And I literally spent, I feel like a month of just like jotting down every single possible business thing that I could, I could do. And uh, eventually I came across the, the idea of like e-commerce and drop shipping. And this was long before, you know, like it, like gained the popularity of like what it is today. But uh, yeah, I essentially got into drop shipping and uh, did that for, for quite a while. I took like that term off and like just blew up my like e-commerce business with drop shipping and it was doing so well. It was like mostly on autopilot for me. So I was like, man, you know, I'm just kind of coasting on this. I'm just going to, you know, go back to college too and run this on the side. So that was like my big first entrepreneurial venture. I love it. And like, do you feel like, like what your story is very similar to mine in the sense that like I, the first entrepreneurial thing I did was also in college. And I had like a similar thing where I wrote down just every single possible entrepreneurial thing I could do. I didn't really catch on to it until like my mid twenties, but I am curious, like, what do you feel like caused that? What inspired that? Do you feel like it was something like in inner like genetics, or do you feel like there was something that actually, you know, was triggered from the outside? Like what caused it to come out in college? Yeah. I mean, I think my biggest inspiration is my dad. I mean, he's a small business owner and I mean, he was pretty much rags to riches type story. I mean, he pretty much grew up in like a chicken house. Like he was like really rough in it and he started his own business and just like watching my dad, like kind of just start that business and like his entrepreneurial drive is what really kind of gave me the spark and the energy to also want to be an entrepreneur. So I love it. Awesome. So my man, this is Scorch the Fears. And I always ask this question, especially at the beginning, like to people, because we're always like the point of this podcast is to get people over their fears of starting, of starting in real estate, right? And that is like the main point of this podcast of real estate or just entrepreneurship in general, right? So what do you, what were your fears, when you were starting out, like when you were just starting to do this, what were your, what were the fears you had getting into entrepreneurship, whether it was like any of your businesses, like what was your greatest fear, especially at the beginning? 
Yeah, I mean, it's kind of always been this fear that I just kind of like this self limiting belief that like, you know, I can't actually do it. Like, you know, I see other people doing it, but I just don't really know if I can actually do it or, or achieve it to the same level as other people. So it's always just like this limiting belief in the back of my head. And like looking back now at like how far I've come from like the very beginning, it's, it's crazy. And like, when I start up like a new business, like I still like, will get this like limiting belief in my head. Like, you know, like, is that really possible? Like the most recent one was, you know, when I decided to go all in on social media back in December, I was like, you know what, like, I'm going to try this. Like, I'm going to stick it out for like a year. If I can get like 10,000 followers in a year, like that would be like a huge win for me. But like, I just still have this like self-limiting belief that like, can I actually like achieve that? So like, I feel like I've always just been like my worst, you know, critic and, and stuff. And I've been really hard on myself. So just trying to like overcome that is, is something that, you know, I still struggle with today, but. I love it. I love it. So then what, let's just talk about the social media a little bit, because I just think that's super freaking cool that you like jumped on Instagram, like insanely high, insanely quickly within like four to five months. Like, how does uh, this must be a question you get all the freaking time, but you know, it's gotta be classically asked, like how, what about you? You feel like made it any different than anyone else trying to be an influencer or trying to get into the space of getting followers, right? Like, how did you, how did you, was it like the quality of the content? Was it something specific about the content? How did that, how did you get it where your Instagram was like exploding? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing for me is like if you go to like my Instagram profile and just like look at my like original content, I honestly like just dove in and I had no idea what I was doing and my content was trash. Like if you go back and look at it, it's like a linear progression of how much better my content has gotten. But when I first dove into it and I, and this is like what I feel like is the most important part is just getting started. So you just got to just take the leap and just do it. Like, even if like, it doesn't look very good, like go look at my original stuff that I started posting, like it was garbage. But after like posting for like almost a month and seeing like almost no results, I was like, you know what? Like, how are these other accounts getting all this traction? Like, why is my stuff not growing? And I really like had to take some time to like really study what these other accounts are doing and what other like, you know, successful people in my space, like in my niche and what other people that like have blown up very quickly are, are doing. And that was like a big part of, of kind of my, like my journey is like just studying like other successful social media influencers and taking like bits and pieces from every single one of those influencers and, you know, modeling it towards like my style and how I can improve on that. So that's, it's pretty much what I did is just really just model after like others that have been more successful than me and, you know, making it my own flavor, my own spin on it and, you know, improving on it in ways that I think that it could really like, you know, benefit me and my brand. And I think like, a big part of that is like my content. I make sure that like the stuff that I'm like creating videos on, it's like content that provides high value to the audience and the audience really cares about seeing this stuff. It's like something that like they're interested in and just kind of like following, you know, like the Instagram algorithm and like observing like what people are interested in, what topics are, you know, going viral and being able to like model my content on that based upon, you know, my own experiences and my own niche. And another big part of it is like my editing. Like I, I spend a lot of time on every single video that I do, the editing, and it's, you know, pretty next level compared to like a lot of other people that produce content is I just want to make sure that the editing is just like next level and like really captivates and captures people's attention. I love it. Like definitely, I've definitely noticed your editing is amazing and that makes sense to me as part of it. Drop some, like, this is something, this is probably the thing that I'm missing in my social media stuff is how, wh where, where is this algorithm? Like everyone keeps talking about this out, this Instagram algorithm and like tracking trends and all of that. Like, where do you, where do you find the topics that are like actually going viral right now? Do you just look it up on Google or like, how do you do that? 
Yeah, I mean, there's like a number of different ways to do it. I mean, you can look at Google Trends and you can actually look in real time of what topics are being searched for most frequently by, you know, individuals that, you know, things that are currently happening in the news or like new software, like ChatGPT was like obviously a huge one. And so that's one way to do it. And within Instagram itself, it's not super searchable, but you want to look at your explore page and your explore page is going to have a lot of topics and a lot of like, you know, influencers that are, are creating content. That's why it's super important for, you know, whatever your niche is, if your niche is real estate, you need to like almost exclusively follow other people in the real estate niche. And you need to only interact with those types of profiles because that's the content that Instagram is going to show you. So, you know, if you see a bikini girl scrolling by, don't, don't, you know, stare too long. Don't click on it. Don't like it. Otherwise the Instagram algorithm is going to promote that stuff like on your Explorer page. And you're not going to know like what is actually trending in the real estate niche, for example. So it's really important to, you know, focus and interact with other and follow people that are specifically in your niche because then your Instagram Explore page is going to have all of that content that's kind of tailored for that specific niche. So that's it's been a big you know help for me to find that type of content. Interesting. So like you would say it's like the Explore page is like one of the main ways. So like you literally, it, it, something you do is like for your niche, like you make sure you follow the influencers and that's all of your Explore page. There's no bikini girls. It's not any, it's not any Andrew Tate. It's like literally just like fully dedicated to what you need to be creating content yep. on. And then you're following that. Am I right? Exactly. No, nothing political, no like exotic cars or like anything like that's mm. outside of my niche, like not even fitness, like accounts, nothing like it is purely just based upon like what is in my niche. And I think that's really helped tailor the explore page to know that like, Hey, look, I only want to see this type of content and the algorithm knows that like, okay, like this is like what we can like push your content out when you actually produce content too. So it really helps like kind of hyper focus on that. So that's like kind of one trick or tip I've got in that regard. I love it. And then, so getting started in social media in general, right? Like so many people, so many people I talk to are like afraid of doing social media, right? Like they're afraid of doing social media. They don't want to do it because they're worried about what their friends and family are going to think. Like they don't feel like maybe they haven't even done a deal yet, or they just haven't gone like their bearings in business yet. What do you say to those people? Cause I already know like, yeah, like doing social media, even for me at my level has revolutionized my entire business. Like Let's start with like, what did you have any fears about starting in social media or like making posts or putting yourself out there? And if oh, so, yeah. how did you get yeah. over them? Yeah, absolutely, man. Like when I, when I first started, I was so nervous to post my first video. Like it was just like, just nerve wracking for me because I've never been somebody that wanted to be like an influencer or, you know, was wanting to be someone that was caught up with like all the social media stuff. Um, but I just like had to look at like the reason why I want to create this content and what it has done for other people, like such as like Ryan Pineda, Pace Morby, Jerry Norton, like Cody yeah. Sperber, like all of these like big people that have grown these accounts and these followings. Like they literally will make millions of dollars from their social media profiles. So I just kind of like had to get over myself and just make content and get over the fact that, you know, I'm scared to do it or like I'm worried about like what other people are going to think and just really focus on my why and, and, and just power through it. And with each video, like it was always my goal to get better on, on every single video. I love it. And then what, what inspired you to do it in the first place? Like, was there like a business goal that you wanted to achieve? I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't just vanity. Like what was the reason that you wanted to like start becoming popular on social media and start doing a lot of videos? Yeah. I mean, I think the end goal for me is to eventually be able to have like a fund or a syndication and be able to have that platform to raise money with. I mean, like a Brandon Turner from Bigger Pockets, you know, that's been a massive part of his ability to raise money yep. is from his social media following. And, uh, you know, just reading the book, the best ever apartment like syndication book. Don't know if you've read that one. It's like by Matt Faircloth, but he talks about like in there, you know, you want to have some sort of like platform that you can like reach people on. And for me, 
I, you know, thought that short form videos was going to be that platform. And so that was kind of like my, my end goal with it is to eventually, you know, be able to take down really large real estate projects. I love it. And that's such a good goal. I mean, me and I only have like 2,800 followers or whatever, I get private money. So like, I can't even imagine, I bet you've already been like sent like a ton of it, right? Like, or it's starting to like get going. Like I really like want people to understand like how important I feel like social media is. Cause I also for a really long time was super afraid, did not like what I thought my friends would think of me like from home and all of that stuff. But like it has brought dividends back just being social media active and like in getting it where it's where it needs to be in order to like start growing it because it's it's true i mean i'm friends with pace because he's my mentor we've talked about this on part of sub two and like he we have had like several conversations about how important and like literally he can cre he can create a business just by snapping his fingers basically because all he has to do is do one post and then the entire thing is sold or like there's hundreds of units sold immediately right so what what right now are your goals so creating a syndication right now it sounds like owning like big multifamily. what other what other goals do you have like what is your what businesses are you trying to grow like i, I like to know people's goals and like where they're going yeah yeah so you know, originally, like when I started, the goal was to eventually build up a following so I can start, you know, taking down these large, you know, real estate projects with a syndication or a fund. And that still is like the big goal for me, but kind of as like a side project or whatnot that kind of happened as a result of like how quickly I grew on social media is like people were reaching out to me, like asking for advice and help with social media and like, you know, who's doing my editing and, and all of that. And since I spent so much time and like building like this team that I have for my social media and for my editing, I actually like decided to start a business, which is called Vireal. And that's where we actually help other, you know, people specifically like in the real estate space is like our, where we like really kind of our niche for helping people, but like doing video editing and just kind of providing coaching and whatnot to help other people grow their brand. So that's kind of been something that's been a big focus of mine recently is like growing that company as well. I absolutely love it. Yeah. And at the very end, I'll definitely like plug all of your companies and like everything that you're trying to do. We're like, I'll link and I'm send out your Instagram. It's going to be, it's going to be awesome with the, so w other than social media. So going back, going back to your story, right? Like going back to how did you find out eventually about real estate? Because that obviously led you to the journey where you are now creating real estate related content and then starting syndication. So like, how did you find out about real estate specifically? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of happened by accident. So I had graduated college with a business degree and I thought that I would just like go get a job working, you know, for somebody. But, you know, after like working for somebody for like, I don't know, I think it was like a month after college, I was like, you know what, like, screw this. Like I need to like just do my own thing. And uh, the drop shipping thing kind of faded off and was in that industry for too long and just needed something different. And a family friend was a realtor and I knew she kind of just picked her own schedule and, you know, I think she made okay money. And so I thought about, you know, maybe I would like pick her brain about becoming a realtor. So that way I could like, you know, start like some other business and just kind of do real estate on the side. So I ended up getting my real estate license and, you know, it was just going to be kind of like a side thing for me. I wasn't really going to, you know, take it super serious and, and go all in on it. But after doing real estate for it was like six months, I, I finally got like my first deal. And it was with my brother of all people, you know, shout out to Travis Love it. For, for helping me out with that one. But I made like $10,000, you know, off of this commission check. And I was like, damn, like, you know how many like units I would have to sell in my e-commerce business to make 10 grand. And like, I, this was way less work. Like I, wait, I actually more don't know how many units, how many units does it take to make 10 grand? I actually have no idea. Is it like a thousand, 10,000? Yeah. So I, I was selling this electronic product. It was like before like Roku and Apple TV. So it was, it was like a long time ago, but essentially I was making about 50 to a hundred bucks a unit. So, I mean, if you do the math on that, what is that? Like a hundred thousand, yeah, a hundred or a thousand units, something like that. But I mean, yeah, it just took so much effort and so much technical support. And it was just like, 
so much work to make $10,000 like actual like profit in the company. Whereas selling one house, which, you know, it wasn't like crazy difficult to do. I made 10 grand and I was like, damn, I got to do more of this. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. So then you're just doing traditional real estate there, right? Yeah. Um, right. So then how, so you're doing traditional real estate and you, you're starting in that world. That's like a very common thing. But then what clicks in your head? Because being a realtor, right? That obviously, if that like, that's in the end, that's a job, right? Like you, it's very hard to make being a realtor into a business. You have to own a brokerage and then you got to be a broker. And that takes like a ton of time. So how did you, how did you get eventually into investing? how did you make the switch from traditional real estate into investing real estate? Yeah, it's kind of similar story of how I became a realtor is it just kind of happened by accident. I wasn't seeking, you know, to become an investor, it just kind of happened. So I just kind of like randomly stumbled upon the Bigger Pockets podcast and started listening to stories of like people fixing houses and flipping them. And, you know, this was like, I don't know, like episode 200 or 300. It was, it was quite a while ago. So I was like listening to those kind of like inspired me, but like I never seriously, you know, had like consider actually like doing it until this deal just kind of happened to fall in my lap. So a seller reached out to me and said that, hey, like, let's get this property listed. It's a manufactured home. It's on the outskirts of town. It's got tenants in it that just kind of won't cooperate. They're not paying rent. They've trashed the place. Let's just like see what we can get this thing listed for. So I ran some comps on it and, uh, you know, I was going to like probably, you know, comp out around like 215,000, like with the condition that it was in. And uh, so I actually ended up getting the property under contract with a buyer for my seller. And during inspections, like this thing was a freaking nightmare, man. Like everything came back on this inspection report. It had mold in the trusses, the roof was right. leaking, the septic system was totally shot. And in this area, like these septic systems are like 30 grand to replace. Damn. So, I mean, just like this list just went on and on. And the buyer is like, I'm backing out. Like you can't give me any amount of money to stay in this deal. And yeah. so my seller, you know, he's kind of, you know, getting frantic. Like, he's like, I got to offload this thing. Like, I do not want this anymore. And it's still got the problem tenant in it too. Right. And he's like, I just got to get rid of this thing. Do you have any investors that you can reach out to that we can just, you know, do a cash deal on this thing and, and, and I can be done with it. And so I put some feelers out there to some investors and only got one investor to bite on it. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'll give the guy 90 grand. And so I presented that to my seller and my seller was like, okay, well, let me think about it. That's significantly less than you right. know, what I originally wanted on it. So, you know, I, I started thinking about, it. he's like, you know, if my seller would actually consider this 90 grand, why do I just offer him a hundred grand and just fix and flip it myself? I have no idea what I'm doing, but I feel like I can figure it out. Like I can make this work. <laughs> so that's, that's exactly what I did is I bought it for my seller and wow, I, it was a massive project. I had no idea what I was doing. I got screwed by contractors. <laughs> I just way overspent on, on things, but uh, ended up making a profit surprisingly on, on nice. the deal. Ended up profiting like 50 grand after it was all said and done. Nice. And I was like, damn, you know how many houses I got to sell to, to make 50 grand? Like, I think I should do more of this. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, to make 50 grand off of your first flip, I think that's pretty damn impressive. I think almost everyone, I did, I made money on my first flip, but it was because I was doing it with partners, right? Like I wasn't the only one on it. There was, I had a partner who had actually done a flip before, but like, I have never heard anyone who did it by themselves, especially like a situation like that and also made money. So like, Good job on that. So I like it. What made you, what do you, was it just like, you just thought it was so low? What made you like bite at that moment where you're like, you know what, actually that's so cheap. I feel like I can do it. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it was like inspiration from listening to bigger pockets, like just kind of like listening to other people, like doing it. And uh, it made it seem a lot less scary. Like I had seen like, you know, flip or flop and those types of shows on TV. And it just like, seemed like just so staged and just like, you know, it was only for like select few group of people could actually fix and flip, but like listening to bigger pockets, like gave me like a little bit of the education, but it more so like gave me like the mindset that like, Hey, really anybody can do this. And like, it's, it's possible. So it was kind of like that 
limiting mindset, you know, that like I continuously have, like, it was like kind of the same thing there too. I was like scared about doing it, but kind of listening to bigger pockets gave me like the, the, the like kind of thought that, you know, I could do it. So that's why I took it down. So we're basically at the end of the interview. How can people reach out to you? What are you looking from, from my audience? Like, what could you, what do you need in your business right now? Where are you buying properties? What type of properties? All of that good stuff. And then how do they get you those properties or those deals or that money or whatever you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I can be reached on my Instagram and my handle is just at Cody Tuma, C-O-D-Y-T-U-M-A. And, uh, you know, always looking for good real estate deals, um, particularly like in the mobile home park space, multifamily space, creative type deals, you know, seller finance type deals like are amazing. So would love some of those. If you guys have any, send them my way. And also if you're looking at growing your social media account and, you know, looking at having some, you know, rock star, you know, editor, um, you know, on your team, hit me up. Love it. I love it. And then. Any particular markets? Yeah, I'm looking in Oregon, Arizona, and Florida. Okay, I'm just trying to get it out there because some people are, I don't know if you see the chat right now, but drop that in the chat. And I'm like, is, is, say it one more time, is it underscore Tuma or is it just Tuma? Uh, it's just C-O-D-Y-T-U-M-A. For sure. Yeah, you guys, you'll see his stuff. His stuff is super entertaining. He does an amazing job with his reels on his Instagram. It's what attracted me to him. He's a freaking beast amazing guy i really like it and yeah send him deals he's looking for private money too i don't know if he said that but he's definitely looking for private money to take down these huge multi-family projects and my man i appreciate you so much for coming on it really means a lot and, uh, and yeah and thank you yeah thanks john i really appreciate you having me on it was really great getting to know you man yeah and uh, all right guys next week we're back to normal schedule thursday 5 p.m pst we're going to have John go on and Mahmoud Issa. Guys, that's it. Scorch the fears. We did it again. Cody Tuma, thank you so much. Let's freaking go.